Hi and welcome to this three-part tutorial. We're going to walk you through creating a custom character from the ground up using iClone's character creator. So this is the character that we're going to recreate which is a, uh, a minotaur character as you can see. The some of the uh, the morphs of the base model are quite extreme, but you can get very good results, obviously, using the character creator to uh, to get your base model. The workflow that uh, went into creating this particular character is obviously iClone's character, or Real Illusion's character creator on the front end for the base model, and then uh, 3D Exchange and ZBrush was utilized to create some additional. Uh, more detailed normal mapping of the body texturing and also to create the uh, the clothes and the weapons and accessories and then lastly we used a 3ds max to skin the armor clothing back onto our character creator uh, model so that then we could use it once again in uh, both iClone and character creator for uh, for future modeling if you so chose. So let's jump into it. The uh, We'll start with the character creator itself. The When you load up character creator, obviously this is the uh, what pops up. You have your base female character. For the purposes of my modeling, I utilize the base male character. So we're going to go ahead and load that project up as that's where we want to start with the process. So whenever I'm doing any type of modeling, whether it's in ZBrush or even using uh, creating morphs here in Character Creator, I like to have some kind of reference point. Uh, in this particular case, I used a uh, just this bullhead sculpt that uh, I found on the internet. It has you know a good uh, a good look for what I was trying to achieve. So. This is my reference that I use when uh, when I'm obviously doing the Morris and trying to create recreate that uh, the head shape, etc. Always just a good practice to have something to refer to versus winging it. So you can see on my uh, on my panel here, I already have a Minotaur um, morph. That's because I when I created my Minotaur character, I saved the actual morph itself. Uh, to the base character. There's an excellent uh, tutorial from Real Illusion itself. I've put the the link here in this video as you can see. So if you want to know how to save your own morphs, because I'm not going to get too much into that because that's a whole another area onto itself, just follow the Real Illusion's tutorial here on the screen and uh, that will show you how to save your own. So if you look at the, I just slide my morph now using the base character and now we basically have our full Minotaur character created um, from the male base to our big bad Minotaur. So I'm not going to actually just use that, obviously I'll go through the steps associated with kind of creating this character so that, that way you can follow along and be on your way to creating some of your own uh, your own characters as it were. So once you do have it saved though, the best part about having a, uh, a your own custom morph once you've uh, completed something like this is then you can adjust it further so in this particular case if we wanted to have uh, to make this more of a let's say a female type character we can go to the full body because now we have our full morph and we want to just take the maybe a base female and uh, and add that in if we want to take some of the the musculature out of it, we can do that as well to uh, to make it more of a, a feminine character from our base. Same thing with the, we can do that with the head. We can make it more of a female character. And this is all just by by doing the, the actual um, adjustments to the uh, morphs themselves once you have your own character save. So again, you can uh, you can do all kinds of different manipulation to it. And we'll adjust the body size maybe here. And so you can tweak your your character after the fact. 
So again, we'll go back and just get back to the uh, the base mail to create, start beginning the the project. But I just wanted to uh, to show you that uh, those options. So from our base character, the biggest scenario that you're going to be dealing with is obviously the the various morph sliders, and you're not limited to just the the level 100 or just the the sliders. So for this minotaur itself the best place to start is obviously in the body shape at least that's where I like to, to, to start when I'm dealing with any type of modeling so it gives me my perspective so for this particular case we started with just the uh, the full body scale size because I wanted to beef it up I didn't I want it to be much larger than the average human and obviously we wanted it to be a lot stronger of a uh, of a character so we just added in using the reillusion existing morphs to add that musculature into the character itself there's certain areas that uh, that I find when you add size uh, mass to a character in particular in the the legs and the thigh area you end up with almost overlap it's an easy easy fix using the into the leg morphs and adjusting the, the the crotch width it'll just spread out the uh, the leg positioning a little bit so that you don't get that kind of jammed up overlap uh, look and in this particular case as well we want to adjust our our head size to make it a little bit of a bigger sort of uh, of character because the the head is going to be more of that uh, bovine snout look so there we've got our, our overall base shape for the uh, the character that we're going to be working on. Now the rest of the uh, the work is all going to come in and around the the head and the neck area. Obviously, I'm going to go through and and show you some of the key features that I used, and then I'll uh, I'm obviously going to speed up. I'm not going to go through every one. We'll be here for uh, for quite a while. Otherwise, in the in the video, so you want to start obviously in the the head area itself. And for this particular model that I'm looking for, and again, I'm referencing my my image of the the bull head. I need to create a much more angular and protruding face environment. And there's so many different morphs that uh, Realusion has provided. It makes it really really easy. So in this particular case, we want that face angle to come way out. And you can see that by pulling the slider, I can get to 100. And we also want the center depth of that face to be out. Now at 100 there's a couple of different ways we need obviously a much more prominent protrusion in this particular case so there's a couple different ways you can do it you can bake this slider in at 100 and then it'll reset and as you'll see here I'll just do it for you you can bake and then it'll reset the sliders again and then you can protrude them out further if you choose um, and that's a, a, a slower step-by-step -step kind of process for it that you can do. Uh, as you see, it reset it back to zero, and now we can push it out the angle again and the face depth. But you're also not limited to 100. Just because the slider goes up to 100, that's just the way that the morph was originally built. We want to go a little bit further, so I can actually bump this up and use the, the numeric values and go 200 and you'll see that it pushed it out even further and same thing with the face angle we can push that out further to 200 and now we're getting more of that that pushed out face that we're looking for we can adjust the uh, the skull we know that that's uh, we want that to be dropped down and it goes the same in reverse that's not enough for me that minus 30 so we're gonna go and drop this to minus 50 and take a look where that is and say no nope, we still want a little more than that and so there so that's I'm happier with that uh, that type of shape but again that's an important part so that you can save yourself uh, heaps of time instead of just constantly baking and then resetting and baking and resetting you can just use the the numerical values for your uh, scenario another trick uh, or not really a trick but just uh, I guess tidbit for to help speed up your process is using your the favorites button on the morphs so in this particular model I know that I was using the 
the face angle and I know I'm using the face center depth a lot there's other there's other um, morphs that I'm going to be using uh, particularly around the uh, the nose we want the uh, the nose bridge flat and I know I'm going to be using that one a lot and as you get into more modeling you'll be able to go through this kind of stuff and figure out which ones are you're going to be dealing with but again for me workflow wise I just like to uh, to identify some of the uh, the sliders that I'm going to be using and by clicking on the favorites it just pulls them out into the different area which you'll see up top here on your modify panel is favorite so anything you designate as a favorite with the by clicking the heart it pulls out into your favorite section so that you can in turn just access them quicker instead of sorting through all of the actual individual sliders that you may or may not be using so again it's not a necessity it's just I find that it's it works with the uh, for my workflow itself a lot better than than going through and and constantly trying to to slide through every uh, every item so I'm gonna do that a little bit and then I'm gonna play around with it I'll speed up the the video so that we're not here uh, again all day as I as I do it because I want to get to uh, part two which is the uh, taking the character out into 3d exchange and into uh, ZBrush as well so that's what we'll do now and uh, then I'll uh, join you back here shortly Okay, so what you'll see uh, after, again, you'll go through with your own trial and error of creating whatever um, shape you're looking for. This is the, hopefully, you kind of get to a, an end result uh, that you're happy with that you can then continue on with your, uh, your uh, export and clothing. So for me, I'm pleased with this particular um, build I guess of the uh, the monitor or minotaur head if you will when I take a look and I compare it to my um, sort of sculpted version I feel like I've got the the right head shape it's good enough for these purposes so the next part is a pretty important part of the uh, the entire process and it's getting the uh, the character out of character creator and ready to be manipulated uh, elsewhere into whatever your chosen uh, modeling program is. For me that happens to be ZBrush. So we're gonna go over and we want to export to FBX. So we're gonna get this character out and the reason we're doing this it's gonna give us the the key it also gives us the key with uh, an OBJ but I like doing the uh, the full uh, FBX uh, export as well. Um, I will be doing the the OBJ also so that we can get the the uh, materials so right now we're going to export it I do like to select the Lightwave Sketchfab compatible option because that gives it me the option later uh, of if I want to view it in Sketchfab which is a, a um, online viewing of 3D model it's just a uh, a more comprehensive way instead of having static 2d you can see view them in 3d so I'm going to check that I don't need to include any motions at this point and we're going to now export our character and I have a folder you can save it wherever you want and we're gonna call this minotaur base 
for my FBX and that's going to go ahead and export my XBX file. I'm then going to go and export the OBJ file as well to that uh, I'm going to leave the Y up, my full body, and I'm going to export that also to the same uh, folder that we just had for the tutorial and we will call that Minotaur Base as well. So now we've exported the the file and now we're ready to go and uh, start working on some of the clothing like you see in this model and again we'll walk that through in part two. I hope this uh, particular tutorial was helpful for you on the cool or character creator side of the fence and continue on to part two if you're interested in seeing some of the ZBrush and the clothing creation uh, as well as normal mapping and uh, some more detailed modeling of the, the character itself. So thanks for watching and uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you in part two.